Esperanto is a made-up language spoken by millions of people, and today we're going to explore one aspect of how this language has naturally evolved over time. The letter H with a hat. Who keeps stealing its hat, and why? First, let's talk about why it wears a hat. It was given a hat by Dr. Zamenhof, the creator of Esperanto. It's actually one of six Esperanto letters that wear a hat, although this one has a bow instead. In designing the language, Zamenhof wanted each sound to be represented by one letter. Well, the Latin alphabet has 26 letters, but he wanted a few more sounds than that, and moreover, some Latin letters were discarded, as they aren't typically recognized as making unique sounds. So, he removed Q, W, X, and Y, but added six new letters, CHO, JO, CHO, JO, SHO, WO. These are actually existing letters in disguise, but you would never know it because they're wearing hats. Some of these letters follow a predictable pattern. CHO sounds like a CH, SHO sounds like an SH, JO sounds like a soft G, but not a GH, because English is weird. Who cares about English? So what's this about, then? It's the same sound we pretend to make when saying Bach or Loch, although most of us can't be arsed and just use a hard K instead. Bach, Loch. But haven't you noticed all the English words where CH is pronounced with a K? Mechanical and chemistry, to name a few. This is because had its own letter, let alone its own sound, in Greek, whom we stole these words from. For stolen Greek words that get pawned off to Esperanto, that's where ch belongs. As a side note, why does H wear the hat? Why not the pants? The sound ch is often considered similar to h. They're articulated the same way, and in nearly the same place. Hmm, but why did the sound become k in English? Well, k is articulated in the same place as ch, and nearly the same way. These sounds relationship is clearly visible when looking at the International Phonetic Alphabet. And now for the real question. What's the deal with ho? It is a vanishing letter in Esperanto. From an arbitrary corpus of nearly 1.5 million letters, ho occurs 0.01% of the time. For comparison, the most frequent letter, a, has a frequency of 11.93%. Out of 5,259 official words, the letter H is present in only 34, or 0.6%. And a number of Esperantists are trying to eradicate the letter H even there, by replacing it with the letter K. For example, Mechanica becomes Mechanica, Chemio becomes Chemio, and Chirurgo becomes Chirurgo. <laughs> Neither of those are easy to say. But two words stand in their way. Choro and echo, the words for chorus and echo. These words pose a unique challenge because the words choro and echo already exist. The former means heart, and before you think of replacing it with a bare H instead, choro also exists, meaning hour. The other word is harder to translate as it's actually just a prefix turned noun, but it essentially means commencement. Neither of these words are especially common, but their mere existence is an oft-cited justification for keeping H as a separate letter. Despite this, reformers know no bounds in their crusade. They won't let two measly words stand in their way. Instead, they've proposed alternative, non-unionized replacements. Coruso and Echo. This kind of change is not unprecedented. While Esperantists are resistant to changing that which already exists, new words are coined all the time, and plenty of words have synonyms and dual forms. Choro wouldn't be wrong, but authors moving forward might opt to write Coruso instead. The letter Cho is on the run. But why do people hate it so much? I've checked its Twitter history and found nothing objectionable, so what gives? Some people just think it looks ugly. How does a lowercase h even wear a hat? Like this? This? This one's my favourite, personally. But let's bring our attention to the sound it makes. The sound itself is not the problem. Although we barely have it in English, it's fairly common in Western Germanic, some Celtic, and all Slavic languages. 
The problem is that very few languages make minimal pairs between ch and ch. That is to say, few languages distinguish words only by these sounds, as does Esperanto with choro and horo. Some languages only have one or the other. For example, French and English, practically speaking, only have ho, while Russian and Greek only have ch. It's not so much that one has to learn a new sound. After all, you can probably sound a ch or something close enough, but the coexistence of these sounds prevents them from being allophones, or sounds that sound close enough. Without ch, a Russian speaker could pronounce every ch with a ch, and it's close enough. But one cannot make a habit of this without potentially waking up at eight ochoras. This crusade actually dates back to Zamenhof's time, before the language's founding document was even ratified. Zamenhof often publicly responded to inquiries about Esperanto and clarified his position on various matters. In 1902, he wrote to one bewildered reader, Regarding the letter H, you are entirely correct. If I were to create the language now, having as much practical experience, I certainly would throw that letter out. But now I personally have no right to make any change in the language. Only some future academy can make changes. Therefore, I cannot give you officially the permission to write Kemio, etc., because that would indicate that I regard myself as the owner of the language. But privately, I can tell you that I approve of your idea and would never protest your use of both forms, with ko and with ho. This future academy came into existence some years later, and remains the authority over Esperanto to this day. It routinely officializes both the H form and the K form of several words, having done so as recently as 1974. That said, the academy seems to prefer H where possible in its own material. H has faced an uphill battle, but it may not be disappearing at all. In fact, it might be gaining traction. A corpus of new text has this letter almost four times as often as a similar-sized corpus of old texts, though that's not saying much. Some speakers wish to preserve this letter as a part of Esperanto culture. The famed Esperanto translation of Minecraft calls this nether dweller the Chasto, an invented word that otherwise has no meaning and no etymology with any other language. H is also commonly used online for interjections and onomatopoeia, sometimes even for those that don't have this sound. This reads like ch, even though that's not a customary laugh for many people who write this way. Others yet insist that ch makes Esperanto more international, and judiciously use it in loanwords and proper names. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slice of Esperanto history. If you'd like to prank your friends, send them this video and say it's for Halloween. And make sure not to forget your hat. Pri la litero ho, vi estas tute prava. Se mi creus la lingvo nun, havante jam tiom da sperto praktika, mi certe forjetus tiun ci literon. Sed nun mi persone jam havas ne mian raiton fari ian shanjon en la lingvo. Shanjoin povas fari nur ia estonta akademio. Tial doni al vi oficiale la permeson scribi che mio kai tie blu mi ne povas, char per tio ci mi montros che mi rigardas min kiel mastron de la lingvo. Sed private mi povas diri al vi che mi vian ideon approbas, kai mi ne miam protestos se vi usos en la vortaro ambao formoin, kun ko kai kun ho.